In this presentation, I'm going to talk about hull types and characteristics. So there are three basic hull types, displacement hull, a planing hull, and a semi-displacement hull. So I'm going to start out talking about the displacement hull. First of all, I want to define displacement in terms of naval architecture. Uh, displacement is the weight of the water that's displaced by a vessel at rest. And it's equal to the weight of that vessel. And a displacement hull is a hull that continues to displace her own weight in the water while moving forward at speed. So the amount of water she's pushing out of the way when she's moving is the same as the amount of water that she's pushing out of the way when she's tied to the dock. Now, some of the advantages of a displacement hull is that it moves through the water with relatively sm with a relatively small amount of horsepower. So it doesn't take a big engine uh, to move a displacement vessel through the water. It's a very efficient way to move lots of weight. So it's good for long range uh, uh, voyages uh, because you can carry lots of fuel and it will be used sparingly. And this is why cargo ships are displacement hulls because cargo ships are transiting sometimes transoceanic or, or making transoceanic voyages. Uh, they're carrying lots of weight and um, they need to uh, use small amounts of fuel because uh, the cost of fuel affects the bottom line of a company that's trying to make money carrying cargo. Now, some of the drawbacks or, or disadvantages of a displacement hull is that the speed through the water is limited by the wave created by the hull. So we call this limitation the theoretical hull speed for displacement vessels. So putting this into an equation, so there's a rule of thumb uh, where, that, where you can calculate a vessel's theoretical hull speed. And that's 1.34 times the square root of the length of the water line. So that will give you the hull speed in knots. So for example, if we have a vessel with a 100 foot water line and we want to figure out what our hull speed is in knots. Okay, so it's 1.34 times the square root of 100. I picked 100 because it's easy to do square root. So that would be 1.34 times 10 equals 13.4 knots. So as the vessel approaches this hull speed, the efficiency of the hull drops exponentially. Um, it, it drops exponentially. It drops rapidly. So uh, basically what happens is the vessel is creating a wave moving through the water, and the faster it goes, the deeper the vessel sinks into that trough of that wave, creating more turbulence, more friction, and it just gets to a point where it really cannot push past that threshold. So if you look here in this photo, we have, again, examples of displacement hulls. And if you look at the tugboat up in the top left-hand corner where the arrow, the, the arrow is pointing out the wave that is created by this hull, and uh, you can see that this tugboat is probably tra traveling at its hull speed. And if it goes any faster, it'll start to sink down further and uh, rather than go fat, then or rather than overcome its hull speed. So now I'll talk about planing hulls. Uh, planing hull uh, has enough speed and power to overcome its own wave. So basically, it's not limited by its hull speed. It, uh, rather than sinking down into the trough of the wave that's being created, it actually um, rides up on top of the water. So it rides on water from hydrodynamic lift rather than buoyancy once it's, once it's uh, operating at speed. So in theory, a planing hull doesn't need to be able to displace its own weight in water. So if you think of it in terms of if you took a piece of plywood and attached an outboard motor to it, you and and you drove it as a planing hull, um, you would probably be able to stay on top of the water. The only problem is, of course, if you stopped because you couldn't displace any water while stopping, you would end up sinking. So, 
that's that's one of the characteristics of a planning hall. Now, some of the advantages of a planning hall is that a uh, smaller boat, relatively small uh, waterline length, uh, can go can go pretty fast. And this is generally why ski why uh, ski boats and personal watercraft like jet skis, those are all planning halls. Uh, people want to go fast. People want to zip around and not be confined by their uh, waterline length. Some of the disadvantages is that you need a lot of horsepower to get up on plane, get out of that hole, that, that hole of the wave. So it takes a lot of horsepower. Um, if you look at the uh, size of the vessels and the amount of horsepower that they have moving them along, and you compare that with a uh, displacement hull, that the amount of horsepower that's required is is uh, much higher. So that's one disadvantage. They're because of that, they're generally short range. Uh, you're not going to be taking a planing hull across the ocean, and if you did, it would just cost you a ton of money and fuel. And so they're generally short w range, and they're not really intended for uh, the big ocean, big seas. Now that brings us to the semi-displacement hull. So this is sort of a compromise between the planing and the displacement. So it's it uh, operates in transition between displacement and planing. The displacement is minimized by some hydrodynamic lift. So some of the advantages of the semi-displacement hull are that it can cruise faster than its theoretical hull speed. It has better sea keeping abilities, meaning that it can handle big waves better than a planing hull, and it can carry more weight, uh, more weight than a planing hull. Some of the disadvantages is that uh, it requires greater horsepower than a displacement hull, and therefore it has a shorter range than a displacement hull. And therein lies the fact that this is a compromise between the two. It is a good design for vessels that need to move fairly quick, but also need to be able to handle big seas. Uh, one example is our pilot boats, which I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, it's a good design for power cruisers. And uh, so basically big, big power yachts. People like to load up for a cruising vacation and uh, spend less time in transit, and more time in their destination. So generally that's why they like to have um, the semi-displacement hull for a uh, personal yacht to power cruiser, like the one that you see in the top of the slide. Now, we can categorize boat hulls into three basic shapes or forms. And the first one is the round bottom. Then we got the V bottom. And then there's the flat bottom. So just like uh, in your book, the table, table here illustrates the categorization of the different hull forms and the hydrodynamic characteristics of the various hulls with these hull forms. So this little tugboat here is a good example of what you would uh, consider a round bottom displacement hull. So a distinguishing feature of the round bottom displacement hull is that there aren't any real hard corners. Other than what you see there at the keel, everything is, else is made up of nice smooth curves, particularly at the turn of the bilge, which is that transition area between the bottom of the boat and the side of the boat. If it had a corner, that would be what we would call a chine, but a round bottom hull, it's just a nice smooth curve. One of the advantages of the round bottom displacement hull is that it moves through the water more efficiently. There's not a lot of corners that could cause eddies that decrease the efficiency of the vessel moving through the water. So it does take less horsepower or less fuel to propel it through the water. One disadvantage is that not having that hard corner can make it more susceptible to rolling than if it had what we call a chine there. Another disadvantage of the round bottom displacement hull is that it's more expensive to build. Because you have to account for all of these nice smooth curves, that's more difficult to construct. It takes more time, therefore it costs more money. 
if you have nice easy corners to weld the plate when you're welding together the plating that makes it a lot quicker to build and uh, therefore the construction cost is less however once again it will not move through the water quite as efficiently as if it were a round bottom hull with all of these smooth curves the round bottom displacement hull is generally a more comfortable vessel in the water it, it tends to to roll over the waves in a much smoother it, it, it tends to roll over the waves uh, better than if it had a lot of hard corners. Hard corners can make the boat a little more snappy, a little less comfortable. Angles such as the hard shine, that's where you see the arrow, that's the uh, that sharp corner between the bottom of the boat and the side of the boat. So that's what we call the turn of the bilge. So that, that distinct corner there is what we call a hard shine. So the uh, displacement V-hull has distinct angles. Uh, not only can you see a sharp angle at the chine, uh, but you also see where it makes the turn to the keel. So that's quite a bit different than the round bottom, round bottom hull with the nice smooth curves. Now uh, some of the advantages of the displacement V is that uh, it rolls less than the round bottom. Um, but really the main advantage of this type of construction is that it costs less to build a vessel like this than it would a round bottom displacement vessel and where you have all of these curves it's just when you're when you're constructing a vessel like this uh, it's easier to to uh, weld your plates together and it takes less time to construct than if you had to have a lot of the smooth curves where you got to do a lot of bending and forming and so therefore the construction cost is less. Some of the disadvantages of this displacement V is that it can be less, less comfortable in, in the waves, in the seas, and due to the snappiness of the roll where uh, a round bottom hull, even though it may roll more, the movement's going to be smoother in the waves than uh, if the bottom has all these hard angles. It's going to have a more of a, a snappy feel to it. Uh, one of the other disadvantages of this type of hull is that it's slightly less efficient than a round bottom displacement. And that's because of all those hard angles as the vessel moves through the water. There's turbulence created around some of those hard angles. And that turbulence uh, can have a tendency to slow the vessel down and uh, therefore making it less efficient. So now I'll talk about the semi-displacement V. And other than the advantages described earlier with semi-displacement hulls, uh, the V makes her able to chop through rough seas better. So for example, it's an ideal hull for a pilot vessel, and which, is the, which are the three vessels in the slide here. So a pilot is someone who has uh, expert knowledge of a particular harbor or waterway. So when a ship comes into sea um, from another part of the world, uh, generally they are required to hire on a pilot to bring the ship into harbor. And um, so in order, the way that they get the pilot out to the incoming ship is using a pilot vessel. So that being said, a lot of pilot vessels have to be able to go out into the open ocean in any type of condition and they want to be able to do it quickly so they need a boat that can get out drop off the pilot and get back quick and they need to be able to do this in rough seas so that's why they they uh, tend to like this type of hull so one of the things I'll point out here in the pilot boats you can see the uh, where the V continues all the way back to the stern so that's the uh, the V uh, semi-displacement vessel. Now I'll compare that with the modified V on the semi-displacement vessel to the right. Uh, this is again that power cruiser. So this is what we call modified V where the dead rise angle changes from the bow back aft. Now you see here the dead rise angle is pretty sharp and which makes her uh, makes her good at cutting through some of the chop or some of the waves. Now, as you move back towards the stern, that angle flattens out. Now, what by flattening out that angle and decreasing the dead rise, 
it makes the vessel plane a little bit better. It gets more hydrodynamic lift than the vessel on the left. So that helps it ride up a little a little bit better than the vessel on the left. However, again, the disadvantage that you have here is by having a flattened hull, it may it can make the ride a little bit rougher when you have that sort of flat bottom smacking on the waves. This is what's known as a uh, planing hull, more specifically a modified V. This vessel was designed for the Coast Guard with an intention of being able to go out quickly into moderately rough seas. When looking at her bow, you can see the V is pretty well pronounced. This enables her to chop through the waves, thus making her more seaworthy and uh, capable of going out into uh, rougher water than if she would have had uh, a flatter bow. Now when looking at the stern, one of the things that I want to point out is what we refer to as the dead rise. The dead rise is the angle between the bottom of, of the boat at a baseline which is roughly parallel with the ground. Now notice in the stern on this boat, the dead rise angle is less pronounced than what it is in the bow. The reason is, is because by having less of a dead rise angle back aft, it makes her easier to come up on plane. Okay. Now, on some planing vessels, there would be very little to no dead rise angle. It would be flat right across the stern. Now that makes it even more efficient in coming up on plane. However, when going out into moderately rough seas, it would be a much rougher ride. So by keeping some amount of dead rise angle, some V in the stern, that makes her cut through the waves a little bit easier, thus making it a, a much smoother ride out in moderately rough seas. Now remember this vessel was designed to go out moderately rough seas and to go fairly fast. They needed to use this vessel at times to go and rescue people. A lot of times those people would get in trouble out in uh, water that was moderately rough. So they needed something that was going to be seaworthy to be able to handle those types of conditions. Uh, but also they needed something that could go fast. It wasn't going to be limited by its theoretical hull speed. So that's why they needed a planing hull. So this is sort of a compromise between a planing hull and a seaworthy hull um, by having that modified V where it's more pronounced in the bow than in the back or in the stern. Uh, but yet it does have um, somewhat of a minimizing of the dead rise angle to make it better for planing. So I'll talk about the flat bottom planing hull. And uh, flat bottom planing hulls are very efficient in coming up on plane. It really doesn't take a lot of work to uh, get the vessel to escape its, its uh, hull wave. It, it doesn't take a lot of work to get it up out of the hole. It has really good hydrodynam hydrodynamic lift. Um, so they're good vessels for, for scooting around on. Now, with the flat bottom planing hull, they're not very good in rough water. Uh, in most instances where you see flat bottom planing hulls used are in, uh, in water like what you see in the bottom of the slide. Nice and smooth flat water. They're used on a lot of inland lakes. Uh, they're good for rivers. Uh, people like them down in the, in the bayous of uh, Louisiana. And in those areas, you don't really have much chop. You don't have uh, anything more than small ripples on the water. Uh, it's fairly sheltered water. So it's good to have a nice uh, flat bottom boat that can uh, uh, plane very efficiently, move around in the water really quick. Uh, one of the other disadvantages is that uh, they don't track very well. They don't have good directional stability uh, compared to vessels with keels or with Vs. Uh, by directional stability, I mean the ability to stay on course or, or go, go straight. They they can have a tendency to to want to to want to slide around on the water. Um, one of the things they do to uh, to remedy that that problem is they'll involve they'll they'll build them with these uh, stringers here, these longitudinal stringers, and this really helps out for st directional stability. So there, it's almost like you got uh, a bunch of individual keels that help. Um, help the vessel uh, keep from slipping sideways. 
And uh, these stringers also add to the rigidity of the boat, uh, the flat bottom, the because the the metal isn't isn't the plate or the the uh, the sheet metal isn't bent in a way that makes it more rigid. Uh, it can kind of flop up and down like a drum, and by installing these these stringers, it can make the bottom more more rigid. So here's an example of a flat bottom displacement hull. So these are barges, and uh, now the one nice thing about the flat bottom displacement hulls is that uh, they're incredibly cheap to build. So these these types of hulls are are basically just a big metal box. You don't really have to worry about putting any curves or or major angles in the bottom. You don't have to bend the plating a whole lot. So you're just basically building a metal box. The only angle you have to deal with on some or maybe the bow and the stern just to give them a, a little bit of, uh, of a sort of aquadynamic shape. Uh, one advantage too is that the flat bottom displacement hull has a lot of initial stability. So it makes them a good work platform. You can put heavy equipment on there. Uh, you can have a crane where the center of gravity is moving around quite a bit. And um, so that uh, that makes some good good work platforms. Um, yeah, so because their their stability is determined more by their um, their their buoyancy, the distribution of their buoyancy rather than the ballast. Take two on flat bottom displacement. So this is an example of a flat bottom displacement hull. Uh, one of the advantages of the flat bottom displacement hull is that uh, they have a lot of initial stability. So that makes them a really good work platform. They're good to use as crane barges um, and also to uh, Flat bottom displacement, take three. So here's an example of a flat bottom displacement hull. Now, one of the advantages of the, the flat bottom displacement hull is that they have a lot of initial stability. So that makes them really good work platforms. Uh, they're good for, for uh, having a crane. Um, where you need to do some marine construction uh, because a crane you're you're shifting around the center of gravity a lot and you need something that's not going to not not going to tip very much and if you have any other heavy equipment sitting on the deck you don't you don't want it rocking a whole lot to where you have the potential of that equipment shifting and uh, causing damage or harm so they make really good work platforms because of their their good uh, steady and stable deck the other advantage is that they're really cheap to build. You don't have any real compound curves. Uh, you don't have to do a lot of bending of the metal plating. You're just basically building a big metal box. And uh, the only real angles that you have to deal with are sometimes at the bow and the stern. And just to give some of the barges a little bit of, of a, a hydrodynamic feature to them. Now, some of the uh, some of the disadvantages of the flat bottom displacement is that they're not very efficient. It 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 takes a bit of work to move this type of hull through the water compared to, say, another uh, other types of displacement hulls with pointy bows and sterns. So they're less efficient moving through the water. Uh, also, flat bottom displacement hulls can have pretty poor ultimate stability so that makes them less seaworthy uh, they're not as good out in big seas um, so if uh, if they start to tip significantly they could end up tipping all the way over and uh, without being able to come back so if you've seen my video of initial versus ultimate stability this will uh, this will be easier to understand 
So other hull types, uh, we'll look at multi-hulls. Multi-hulls are more efficient at, at planing. They're, they have really good directional stability. And they're more seaworthy than flat bottom and even some V-hulls. Now the stability resembles that of a flat bottom hull. And so they have good initial stability, but ultimate stability is, is not, uh, it's not as good as a lot of uh, displacement hulls with, with low ballast. And their buoyancy or their stability is determined more by their buoyancy distribution rather than the uh, weight of the ballast deep in the hull. Now here's a couple good examples of a displacement sailing hull. Uh, they have deep keels. Um, take two on displacement sail hull. Now here's a good example of a displacement sail hull. Now they're very similar to a motor vessel in that they have the round bottom or they have a displacement sail hull, take three. Here's an example of a displacement sail hull. So similar to a motor vessel, they have a keel and uh, uh, these are a couple round bottom sail hulls. Now the one difference from a motor vessel is the depth of the keel. They need the deep keel uh, for a couple reasons. One uh, is to keep the wind from pushing the vessel sideways. So when the wind is, is on the beam, uh, basically coming from the side of the vessel, it's pushing on the sail and there is a force that tries to push the boat sideways and it needs that keel to sort of dig into the water and it sort of acts as a wing to keep it from moving it moving sideways and instead moving forward staying on course so that's one function of the deep keel now in the case of these two vessels the keel also serves as ballast and the further down you have that ballast the lower the center of gravity so when the wind is pushing on the sails and causing a healing moment or basically the force trying to tip the boat that deep ballast helps pull it upright so that's another another reason why the sailing vessels have a deep keel there are some sailing vessels that have internal ballast the ballast might not be part of the keel and it's inside but they still have a pretty deep hull uh, compared to a motor vessel of the same size and so they have that they need that ballast deep down to keep the center of gravity low to keep the vessel upright. And this is an example of a planing sail, sailing, planing sail hull take two. And this is an example of a planing sail hull. And you can see the, uh, the vessels sort of skipping across the surface of the water. It's not confined by the length of its water line as far as speed is concerned. Uh, so these vessels are much faster than a displacement sailing vessel of the same size. So these vessels are generally designed for going out and having a good time and just like this fellow is doing. It's not necessarily a comfortable boat. It's skipping across the top of the water and you do tend to get more wet in, in vessels like these. And this, this hull type is really good for a racing, a racing boat. So they're designed to go out and go really fast and have a good time. Uh, they're not necessarily the most comfortable boat to go sailing on. As you can probably imagine, the, the two sailing vessels that you saw before, you could probably set your coffee mug down for a duration of time, whereas on this one, you probably would not only spill your coffee, but lose it over the side. So these vessels are just designed to go really fast. They're a lot of fun, but uh, they're not going to be too comfortable. It's not anything that you'd, it's definitely not anything that you'd want to take a long trip or a long voyage in.